In this video, I will show you how to use Affinity Photo to quickly and easily remove those pesky halos from your images. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, then please like and subscribe. So you've created your latest masterpiece, and then you notice that where the scenery meets the sky, buildings and trees, etc., halos. Just as I have in one of my latest images, I have some absolutely shocking halos all around the buildings and especially in the trees. This is caused partially by the camera and lens and then enhanced with post-processing. Some post-processing operations tend to really amplify halos, especially clarity and HDR type operations. But the good news is that we can quite easily and quite quickly get rid of these halos. With Affinity Photo, it's not a problem whatsoever. Affinity Photo has a great tool which will allow us to just paint them away. And that tool is the Clone Brush. Just select your Clone Brush tool from the Tools menu. And then we need to just set the parameters for the Clone Brush. I like to set the opacity to 100, the flow to 100 and the hardness to 0. Just copy the rest of these and then make sure you have a line source set. Lastly, the most important setting, change the blend mode, which is in this drop down here from normal to darker color. This blend mode is what gives us the magic halo removal effect. Using the square bracket keys, set the brush size. In this case, I'm going to reduce the brush size to just a bit larger than the size of the halo just so that we keep the effect as local to the halo as possible. Next, we need to select our source. There's no hard and fast way to select the source. It really depends on the situation. But most of the time, you want to select a point which is at right angles to the edge that you want to remove the halo from. For instance, for this surface, I'm going to select a source just here. What the clone tool actually does is to copy data from the source to the position underneath your cursor, the destination, which in this case will be our halo. And the magic comes from the fact that we are using the darker color blend mode for the operation. How it works is that it will only copy data to the destination if the destination pixels are lighter than the pixels at the source. So in this case, as it performs the copy from the source in the sky to the roof, it will completely ignore the dark, the black roof tiles. As we sweep across, notice that the source is following us. Our halo magically disappears. It's copied sky to the areas of the roof, which are lighter than the sky. The halo. Fantastic. And now we can just follow the edge like so. Then I'll create a new source, roughly at right angles, and dehalo this slope. I don't want to copy the chimney, so I'll create a new source here, and then this little bit of halo. Now, corners can be tricky. You have to be careful where you place your source because you're in an enclosed area and you don't want to be copying data from this scenery. You only want sky. So in this situation, I think I'll just set my source a little bit further away. I think about here will be fine. I can now remove this little bit of corner halo nice and cleanly. Then back to putting the source nearby and clean up this left edge. I nearly clip the chimney with the source, so let's just re-source here, and there we go. Here we have another tricky little corner. So again, I'll select a new source. Now as this sky is gradiated, I couldn't do it here, but I can do it here. As the sky is gradiated, I want to set a source which is horizontal, as that will be a similar colour, or shade. Here will be fine, and then wipe out the halo, like so. Now for the corner, there we go. 
And again, for this little section, I'll choose a little bit of sky, which is a similar color. That will be fine. And then around this part, that's looking pretty good. And now the right side of this chimney. With a little practice, you can do this really quickly. This would probably take me just a couple of minutes to do the whole image. And as we can see, we're quite nicely eradicating the halo. There are a couple of really nasty halos in these holes here. But never fear, we can easily get rid of them. Not a problem. Set a source up in the sky. We don't have to be quite as fussy as to colour matching with these little holes. It won't be noticeable. And paint. Bingo. They're completely gone. I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at this section. I'll just finish off the corner down here and then we'll take a look at the trees. Set source and wipe halo. I don't want my source in the trees so I'll set it up in the sky here. You just have to find the best source position you can for the situation. Let's take a look at these trees. It really should work well. These trees should not be a problem. I'll just slightly increase my brush size to make it quicker and select my source and then wipe away the halos from the trees like so. Shrink the brush a little, select a new source about here and here we go, the halo on the roof line. Select a new source and continue the roof line. Okay, that looks pretty good. The colour is matching reasonably well along the roof line. The complex tree line is done and so it's back to the roof. This really is the best method I know of removing halos. It's really effective. And I think you'll agree, looking at what we've done, that this method does an absolutely superb job of removing halos. Let's just zoom out to have a good look at the image. That looks lovely and clean. This area is now completely free from halos, with no detail lost. And when you compare it to this area that we haven't done yet, you can see that using Affinity Photo with the Clone Tool and the Darker Colour Blend Mode is a great way to remove halos from your images.